Okay, folks, so off camera, we went ahead and removed the rest of the strings and tuning pins. We showed you an example of doing that and a couple of ways of doing it. So whatever way you choose, this is essentially what you're going to be left with after you've removed the strings and the tuning pins. Now, the pressure bar is still on here. Uh, you can actually remove that after you've detensioned the strings. We just hadn't gotten to that part yet. That's just held on with screws. We're going to remove that and discard it. And I held off on removing the action posts because we're going to remove this piece right here and it'll just be easier for us to remove those when we've got this more fully uh, disassembled. So what we're going to do next is get our tilter out and tilt this piano back. We're going to take off the bottom board so that we can access the pedals. We're going to check and repair or replace casters and then we're going to remove the screws for the plate and the key bed and get all of this out so that's coming right up. Folks, normally in our shop we would use something like this here, uh, our uh, piano tilter which is purpose made to tilt pianos on their backs. Probably not something you're going to have laying around the garage or for a single job something you'd care to acquire one for. So we're showing this for the purposes of shops that have one of these on hand, uh, but we're going to tilt this piano in a way that's probably going to be the way you'll try to choose, you'll want to choose in your, uh, in your location. Okay, folks, when you don't have a piano tilter, this is probably going to be the best way to do this. You're going to need two to three people to do this safely, and one point of concern is the casters. We don't want to start tipping this piano only to have the casters roll the underside out from underneath us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get Roy to help me. Roy's going to take the back. We're going to lean it back a little bit. And once we get to the point where that wood is starting to touch on the floor, then I'm going to come around and help Roy lower this down. We've placed these blocks here just to let us get our fingers out from underneath it a little bit easier once it's lowered on down. And then we'll take the, take the rest of it apart. What we've done here, now this lid, see this lid's not touching. Okay, so we had clearance here. You'd want to watch and make sure that you don't damage the lid. Uh, some, in some cases, the entire lid can come off. You can do what you need to for your application there. But now we've got it tilted back. We're going to be able to access all of these parts, get this out, and it's easy to stand it back up again. All right, folks, we're going to talk about some of what needs to be done below the key bed in order to get uh, our ultimate goal, which is getting the plate out of the instrument. Uh, one of the things we're going to focus on right now is getting this, this uh, bottom board off. And to do that, we want to look at the pedals and look at any linkages that may be um, tying the bottom board and trap work assembly to the rest of the cabinet. In this case, we have a, a middle pedal that was probably at one time part of a, uh, a felt rail that drops in between the keys. And uh, I'm sorry, between the hammers and strings. So we're going to get this disconnected, then we're going to take these perimeter screws out and remove the trap work, set it aside for some work later. So most of the time these are held in place, there's going to be a felt uh, cushion, and then there's usually going to be some type of a nut, usually one of these little square nuts in here, and you're usually on just finger tight. You can undo that, remove that off of there. Again, I'm not reusing any of this. Set that off to the side. I say we're not going to reuse any of it. I mean, it, it's kind of up to you, as you'll see in a subsequent video when we talk about uh, putting digital components underneath the pedals. Uh, you'll see most of the time we like to use new components, but it will be up to you. So when in doubt, save your parts, throw them away when the project's finished. All right, that is everything that's, that would be holding the trap work assembly to something else in the piano. Over here on this left-hand side, the dowels that went up to the piano action have already been removed in a previous step. So now we're going to go around the perimeter of the bottom board and remove screws. Now, you'll see this board is uh, either cracked or glue joints have separated. A lot of these boards were edge glued to one another, and over time, that glue joint has broken. So part of our repair process will involve... Uh, gluing these back together and for now we want to make sure we keep all the pieces and kind of keep them in order so here we go we're going to remove these pieces now
All right, so here's our bottom board. You can see there's some repair work to be done. And uh, we may reuse these pedals since they're original to the piano. It looks like they were originally nickel plated. And somebody has uh, painted them gold. So we'll see what we're going to do from an aesthetic standpoint later. But we're going to set this assembly off to the side for now and decide how we're going to progress with it in a later video. You want to either leave in place or remove and keep track of anything like this. This spring is what retains the lower frame panel in place. And these are little stops right here that the lower frame panel closes against and uh, keeps it from going any further into the cabinet. So I'm just going to go ahead and start working this. Sometimes there will be uh, pins like this that you can remove, a hinge pin, and that will start helping you get some of the larger pieces out of the way. And then you can remove these mounts and pretty much probably not going to be reusing these. We have more efficient ways of doing this. So that's out of there now. All right, on to the next step. All right, folks, casters is something that definitely needs attention while you've got the piano tilted. Uh, in many cases, uh, we like to replace the casters with a more modern uh, caster that has either a plastic or even a rubber wheel uh, and uh, also has ball bearing swivel like this right here. Uh, this enables the caster to swing around into position for the wheel to roll. That's actually a common way a lot of floors get scratched is they don't swivel properly and it stays locked in position. And then when you drag it, the wheel is going to drag an edge on your floor. So I do have a video that we'll put a link to in the description and maybe pop up one of those little magical boxes that you can click on to see the caster replacement video. Uh, so that will go into far more detail than what we're going to discuss here. But in this particular case, we're going to go ahead and remove these four casters. Uh, I need to do so because underneath this caster is the screw that holds this portion of the leg in place and we'll need to get that removed in order to access the screws for the key bed which are underneath this portion here. So we're going to get these casters out and, uh, and then remove the legs and remove the key bed. All right, here we go. Now, in a uh, clip that I'm sure Daryl's going to want to share with you at the end of the video, we previously discovered that these casters are a caster design that in 40 years of being in business, I have not seen previously. In most cases, when you've got a, a thick cast socket like this, the caster is made onto the uh, socket and does not come apart. It is swedged like you see. Let's get close on that right there. There's a swedge mark right here that keeps these locked together. And that is how this caster here appeared to me to be, okay? Uh, now, the, the, the different type of caster would be one that's made like these, where the socket mounts and you press this in place. And usually you can tell that's the case because you cannot access the screws without removing this caster. So on this particular one, this looked to me like it was one of these designs here. I removed the screws, and then lo and behold, the swedges did not hold <laughs> on this particular caster. I don't know if that's by design, if it was just supposed to be a force fit there, but clearly this didn't work. So that's going to happen in these kinds of jobs. You're going to find something that doesn't fall in line with the video or any of your other training, whether you've been doing it for this is your first time or you've been doing it 40 years in the piano business, you're always going to see something new. So we're going to get something now to help me get this out of the way probably something along the lines of a larger screw that we'll thread in there and pull out. We'll be right back. All right, folks, even the pros have problems with stuff sometimes. So my initial idea of trying to thread something in here, yeah, the first try or two didn't work. So another technique that I've used in the past is to use screwdrivers and reach under underneath these edges and pry it out. And I'm getting movement. And we've done some of this already off camera so that I can use my no-no words if I need to. Uh, but uh, we've, we've experimented with this, and it's not quite, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, the t this is actually starting to work now, even though we were doing it off camera and it wasn't. I'm leaving little marks here. 
I'm not terribly worried about what happens underneath here as long as we don't damage the veneer around the outer edges here, which we are not doing. But uh, this is <laughs> apparently, this is the technique that's going to work is rocking it back and forth like that right there. Ta-da! And no, no, no words on camera. Yeah, let's see how much fun the cameraman's having. All right, cameraman, you having a good time? No. Let's let him look at the back of your head for a while. Yeah. One eternity later. All right, there, uh, there. Here we go, here we go. Ah, he's got it. That's it, folks. Just keep at it till you get it. Okay, now we're going to take out the what I call the pedal board. Um, there's usually a screw on each end. Sometimes it's just wedged in. You'll have to just look and see. This particular one has screws. We're going to get those out. You want to think I'll change sizes there. There we go. These screws are usually pretty rusty and fight you coming out. They've been there 100 years and they're pretty happy where they're at. Now this screwdriver actually needs sharpening. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description to my screwdriver sharpening video and that's not a joke. I'll actually give you a demonstration in that video that shows you how a sharpened screwdriver grabs better than one that uh, that is basically factory like this one right here. Look for that video. All right, folks, let's see if this is going to, nope, it's going to come right on out. Sometimes they're wedged in, like I mentioned, but this one is just held in with two screws. So this is a fairly easy one to get out. So we're going to remove this set it to the side and save it for later. We'll be, uh, since we're redoing the pedal assembly for the digital project, we're also going to go ahead and uh, replace this felt. We'll cover that in a subsequent video. All righty. Okay, now we're going to work on getting the legs out, which we need to do in order to access the screws holding the key bed in place. Once the key bed's out, will be able to unbolt and remove the iron plate. So, in this particular piano, uh, it has like a leg and a half design, and they are joined by a plate right here that's actually not uh, part of the toe block itself. And so, uh, off camera, we've already peeked around and found out where all the screws are. Um, this case, you've got one screw under here holding this portion in. We've got two screws going through the key bed from the top of the key bed at an angle holding this top part in and then we have two screws behind here holding this half leg in place right here and I do not see an additional screw back here uh, but uh, sometimes you'll find an additional screw holding this plate in place. So we're going to get these out of the way and remove the legs. All right, there we go. We're going to ease that out. Sometimes they're a little hard to get pulled the rest of the way out. We'll use a magnet to uh, help us get those the rest of the way out. Let's do the other side. There we go. Okay, I'm going to get the screws underneath here, and that's going to require a short screwdriver for clearance underneath here behind this area. And this one was missing. I didn't see one in that one earlier. All right, let's swing around to the top now and get those out of the top of the key bed. Get these first right here. Already got them started out, guys, because these were horribly, horribly rusty. And we'll replace them with new, new screws when we reassemble.
That should be all the screws holding the legs in. Okay, we've removed all the screws that we know of from the legs, and we're about to take them out. I want to point out, sometimes pianos that have been refinished will present a little challenge getting these parts apart because the finish will have either seeped down in between parts or has made essentially one layer that's going to crack when we open this up, and that's something that can be dealt with later on, but it is necessary to remove these legs, so that's just something we're going to have to do. Um, sometimes the legs remove more easily going this way. Sometimes they remove more easily going this way. Um, in situations where there's not a common plate, I will sometimes take a clamp and push the toe block away just a little bit to make it easier to get them out. That's not going to be an option in this case, so we're just going to start worming it out. Let's see here. Okay. Let's see here. Yeah, it's, it's in there pretty tight, but it'll come. Let's see here. There we go. And here you can just start seeing the screws that we're trying to get to in order to remove this key bed. Okay. It was a beautiful color originally. Look, there's part of the original finish right there. There we go. Walk it on out. And there's that leg out. Now, we're going to do the other leg the same way, but I wanted real quick to talk about toe block repairs. It is not at all uncommon for these toe blocks to be loose. Daryl, swing around this way. I want to show them this joint right here. This is a glue joint. Generally speaking, there's nothing else holding this in place. And if this is loose, it needs to be repaired. Now, this one's fairly tight. Uh, but if, uh, if this were loose, we would re-glue this probably with uh, hide glue. Tight Bond makes a uh, liquid hide glue. And the reason I don't use a... a uh, Aliphatic resin like carpenter's wood glue, the yellow colored glues, is because the two glues mingling don't necessarily produce the best hold. Uh, now, let me get a bolt real quick. Let's see here. This bolt is, is going to be too long. So just as an illustration, what we would do if this needed repair, besides the glue, is I would also reinforce this with a couple of bolts that would stop about here. And so I, I would select bolts that I could use with a washer right here that would stop. So about this position right here, we drill holes in the legs and then drill the appropriate holes in here and bolt and glue that back on, then that would never be a problem again. All right, so let's get this other leg off. Yeah, this is, this is okay. Right, now that leg is off and we're going to remove the key bed. Key beds are generally held in place with screws on the edges going into the arms. We've got a screw here, a screw here, and oftentimes, yes, there's a screw under here at the back edge of the key bed holding that in. And then sometimes these plate horns will have a screw through them holding in here. This particular one does not, but you definitely want to check for that. So that's the most common locations for the key bed to be secured. We're going to get those out now. Now this part I really like to use a uh, big old bit. Uh-huh. All right. Whoop, that's the part I don't like about these. Save these, you're going to reuse them, or if they're in bad shape, you'll need them to match up to new, new screws. All right. Ooh -wee. I'm going to have to get the flashlight out for this one. Yeah, I'm going to get my flashlight out and see if I can see better what I'm doing here. That one's out. Sometimes these will be different lengths. You can see the case is here. You'll need to note which one is a, a different length or which ones are different lengths and make sure you put them back in the correct order.
Now we're going to be removing the plate so we do not need to retain these little wedges here. I'm going to knock them loose. They're just wedged, basically wedged in there to help support the back edge of the key bed. There we go. Well, that's not particularly sexy, but yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. Let's see if we've got. Yep, the key bed's starting to come loose. I'll usually come around on this front side and check. Around over here, Daryl. See, we're going to need to go ahead and take this out before we remove the key bed because that's going to catch here when we go to lift it out in all likelihood. So I'm going to take a minute, get that piece out, and then we're going to lift it the rest of the way out. Or lift it out. We haven't even started. All right, here we go. All right. Okay. Once again, just like the uh, action bolts, uh, there are flats, generally speaking, on these components that you can use a wrench on and unscrew. That's out. Now we can lift out the key bed. If you got somebody helping you, each one can grab an end. If you don't, just be careful where you stand and slip it out. <laughs> there we go. That high end is hung. Man, what have I got sticking up there? A little bit of dust. Check behind it here. Up. Oh, there we go. Ta da. Swing around here, Daryl. Show them what that was that was hanging it up. Sometimes when they put those action posts through, they didn't drill a hole all the way through. This is a factor deal. See, that's the that's the post of it right there. They drove it in, didn't drill it deep enough. It splintered that out. And that's what was going on right here. When they installed that, it pushed the splinter out, and that's why it wouldn't slide off of here. And that's why I just casually jerked that off there and threw it away. Okay, so we've finally gotten all of the case parts out of the way that we need to get out for access to the plate. So our next step is going to be to undo all of the screws, all of the bolts, We've got some nuts right here on what are called nose bolts. We're going to take those nuts off. And then, uh, depending on how much manpower is available, either just lift the plate straight out, or one of the things I did working by myself for years is I would stand the piano back up, and I would have all of the screws out except for just these nose bolt uh, nuts right there. Slip those off, slip the plate out, and walk it out. So that we may try doing that on camera, but... Uh, that's what we're going to wind up doing here. Now, sometimes you'll see places where the uh, plate is built in up underneath a cabinet part. You're going to have to use a little bit of ingenuity to figure those out. Uh, but for the most part, 99 out of 100 of these are going to come out fairly straightforward simply by undoing all of the bolts that are holding them in. So we're going to get those taken out and then go from there.